You're good. Go ahead. Um, good morning, class. My name is Jesus Fuente. And I want to talk about why you shoot this video. Um, I shoot this video because I want to know what do a human being need to die well and how you can do it for avoid death that I don't want to happen to me and also want to know what things I need to be healthy every day of my life. This video showed me what important things you could have in you. If you die well and without any problems, someone can have, like many people have died of cancer, almost every day are not dying well as was Timothy Harris said. Um, Timothy Harris is a doctor that wants to see what, what we accomplish in health issues and we also talk about positive medicine, a pattern of for this population grounded in what they value. He started by telling a story to his very first patient. It was the first day of side vision with a long white coat. A gentleman, Harold, 58 years old, came to the emergency department. He had headaches for six weeks that got worse and worse. Evaluation revealed that he had cancer that had spread to the brain. The attending physician directed me to share with Harold and family that attending medical directed me to share Harold and family that the diagnosis, the prognosis, motion cars have uh, also into the mechanical career I did only I knew how. I walked in, sat down, he took Harold's hand, took my his wife's hand in just breathe. Harold went fishing the next day. A week later, he died. So, what do we know? We know the population, the most, takes off 15% of gross domestic product in the two point trillion years. It will have every little to do with healthcare at the point. It has a gallon of milk with color substitution. And how can it be? We live in the NSA. It has the greatest healthcare system on the planet. We spend 10 times more than on this thing than the second lending country in the world. The triple of aim healthcare one improve the experience two improve the population of three decrease per capita expenditure across a continuum. While hard time was limited, quality care is not. Quality care is a paradigm from diagnosis to the end of life. The hours, weeks, months, years across the continuum with treatment without treatment. Timothy talked about Christian on stage three, several cancers so metastatic cancer that stand on her cervix, spread throughout her body. She is in her fifties and she is living. This is not the end of life. This is about the you know yet about the elderly, this is about people. Timothy talks about Richard in stage long disease. He got a little boy standing in the baby. His wife was weeks to months and then they just talk and they listen and try to hear difference. Use this proportion to this. This is driving to the context of any sex on disease. And then Timothy talks about name gang Jonathan in his twenties. And they met him several years ago. He was dealing with a metastatic sexual cancer spread in his brain from me. Meaning him and his family, he was a couple of weeks away from a bone narrow transplant. And in the evening, engaging the head, help us understand what is cancer. This is a space that we will all come at the same point. To my cultures, to my parents, to my government, to all human beings, he asked that we stand and we shout and we demand the best care possible 
so that we can live better today and ensure better life tomorrow. We need a shift today so that we can live tomorrow. The most interesting part of the video, I think the best part for me was when he mentioned those three people with cancer that had health issues and did not know what they can do to recover from those types of cancer. It's best for me to be responsible for us, make sure we eat well and exercise so we could die well and peace in peace so we don't die horrible. Um, so my question to you, the first question is, what do you think about Timothy patients? What do you think? Well, Timothy pa patients. What do you think about Timothy patients? Patients. <laughs> their conditions. Right, so what are what are your thoughts on the condition of Timothy's patients, the ones that he gives examples about? What do you think about the state that they're living in? Mm, I think the mental um, thing is used in his patients. Um, it's working because he said uh, after after the the technique or method thing is the patient feels more the the patient are, are like a different, you know. Mm -hmm. They they feel less suffering. Mm -hmm. It really makes sense because mm -hmm. it's really sad when somebody knows they're gonna die because nobody's gonna die, and even and even worse when you have an illness mm -hmm. like cancer or something in your brain, something in your blood that you know that you're gonna die soon. So it really makes sense because he makes his patient feel better mentally so they can die in peace, mm -hmm. at least. Because it's really sad. Mm -hmm. So his patient don't are frustrated. Oh my God, I got cancer so mm -hmm. I can't live anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. They they make they give like a hope to the patients through the method mm -hmm. they use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though they might know like they're not gonna last long, but like they have a hope like they're gonna get better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a something mentally. Because it's not the 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 illness make the people sad. Mm -hmm. It it's, it's something mental. Oh, I can cancer. I can be happy. Make it yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Tim, Tim, Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He he tries to to make it to to keep the patients relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and so how is, Jason, I'm just going to ask a follow-up question. What What's the difference between what Tim is talking about and the kind of care that he's pushing for versus traditional treatment of terminal illnesses? What's the difference between the treatments? The hope. Okay, the hope, but how? Where does that hope come from? By making them think differently. How? 
You guys love to give me vague responses. I want specifics. How? Right, where does that hope come from? How do they think differently? What's happening in this treatment that Tim is giving versus what's happening elsewhere? We know? Anyone know? try it. Say it. Hmm? Yeah, the medicine. What about it? Okay. Yeah, so let's take an example. The first person, Harold, that he talked about, right, had what? What was his illness? Cancer. Uh-huh, he had cancer, and he knew he was going to die, right? Soon. How old was Harold? He's 68, right? Okay. And so, did Harold go through the typical routine for cancer? Did he get chemotherapy? No, he didn't get chemotherapy, right? And if anyone's familiar with chemotherapy, if you've ever had anyone that's gone through it, it's really tough, right? And it's, um, it can be every single day, it can be once a week, but even when the, the patient is not in chemotherapy, they're feeling very sick because of the radiation treatment, right? So when you're 68 years old and you have cancer, you know you're going to die, but you've lived a good life, do you want to be in a hospital getting radiation therapy or treatment every single day and feeling awful and what you know are your last days to live? Right? So that's the difference, right? Tim says that these people should have the opportunity to live the last days of their life the way that they want to, instead of being sick in a hospital, instead of being sick in hospice care, right? Because that in itself is very depressing. Knowing that you're going to die, but you're still having your family spend so much money on something that's, at the end, inevitable, right? Tim saying, what's the point, right? What's the purpose in this? Right? That's the difference. Right, and so because of that, you get that mood change, right? You get that change in mentality. Harold spent the last of his days fishing, right, instead of being in the hospital. That's a big difference. Which would you prefer? Do what I want to do. Do what you want to do, yeah. All right, Jason, what's your next question? Uh, why, do you, why do you want to die well? Hmm? Why do you want to die well? Mm. What do, you, what do you need to die well? Okay. Yeah. What does it mean to you to die well? Be in peace. Mm -hmm. Be in doing what I want to do. Like, like what made me happy. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like you die, you're not like sick in hospitals or whatnot, mm -hmm. but you just die like regular, like not sickness, but you just you die. You just die. <laughs> you just die. But right? then, like, you know how some people sink and then they die, like, bad food conditions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I'm just like, I don't know. Does anyone know anyone that's had a really painful, suffering last few years of life? Yeah. Some of you, yes? Sister. Your sister. Yeah. And so why were they suffering? Um, Mm -hmm. So he wasn't the same person even, right? And that happens a lot when you get really sick, right? You're not the same person, right? The illness might affect your faculties, right? Your brain. It's not like a mental illness, like she got paralyzed too, like she can talk, she can do mm. Mm, anything, but like she can, but like in her mind, she says she can't, so she doesn't move or talk, like, mm. things like that. But when she laughs, you can hear her voice, mm. and she might say, she, she doesn't say, she doesn't, you can hear her voice, she said no. Mm. Like, 
So it's like she can do like she can move and she can talk, but in her mind is like she can. Yeah. So she don't try. Yeah, but she doesn't move. Mm -hmm. Like you see her in bed all day, she doesn't move and at least she doesn't talk. Because she wants you? Yeah. Like in her mind, mm -hmm. like like her brain stop working. So she doesn't have to her brain got like so frustrated that mm -hmm. stop working. So like that's what she can use for everything. Like so she can move like she needs a lot of therapy. She has a lot of time without moving and, and, mm -hmm. and talking, so... Like How old is she? Um, 14. Wow. And so it can be tough, right? It's not just mm -hmm. tough on the individual, but it's tough on the family surrounding, right? Mm -hmm. Because you want to do something, right? But sometimes there's nothing that you can do, right? All that you can do is make that person comfortable. I know this is a sad topic. I know it's morbid, right? But we don't we don't think about it, right? We try not. A lot of us try to avoid thinking about death and illness, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, how you mean someone with cancer or another type of disease, like a the egg and old child, or yeah. So, have you ever met or been exposed to someone with cancer or mm -hmm. another terminal illness? Yeah, I'm my teacher. Your teacher? Yeah, teacher my teacher. Yeah. My mom, she did have cancer. Your mom had cancer? My grandfather, um, my father, father, he died um, a couple years ago, and he had Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. Anyone else have any experience with Alzheimer's? No? My, one of my closest family friends, it's a woman who was like an aunt to me growing up, a really good friend of my father's, um, is 50 years old and she has early onset Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's typically affects older people, right? When you start, when you start getting old, you start forgetting who you are, where you are, the people around you. Um, but this woman is just 52 years old and she's already, you know, she can't live by herself anymore. Her husband constantly has to be with her and take care of her. And when you talk to her, she, she'll remember you eventually, but she's like a the shell mm -hmm. of herself you know everything that is her is no longer remembered by her mm -hmm. and it's really sad and scary because she's only 50 years old and that means that she could live another 30 years but unable to you know recognize the people that love her um, the only positive in this and this is words from her husband is that she lives in the moment Right? She doesn't think about bills. She doesn't get worried or stressed about things. She's just happy to be, you know, walking around, you know, and be enjoying the moment for what it is. Sometimes I feel so scary about that because I'm 19 years old and I forget this. Okay, but I mean that could be because yeah. you don't pay attention to things, <laughs> enough, right? You guys probably all we all forget things, yeah, right? But you, you guys don't understand one thing that when you have a family that has Alzheimer's. You can, you can get Alzheimer's mm -hmm. because of the genetic. And that's yes. really scary. So I'll give you guys a, a nice bit of knowledge for you. People that speak more than one language are less likely to get Alzheimer's. So you guys should feel happy about that. Okay? <laughs> so don't worry. As long as you're reading and doing things to exercise your brain. Really, miss? Yes, really. Being bilingual. See, you guys, being bilingual is an amazing thing. Right? Jason, do you have any last thoughts or questions? That's it. There was one quote that you said that I really liked. You said, we, what we do today allows us to live tomorrow. Yeah. Right? And I thought that was really powerful. So, um, any questions for Jason? I think it was pretty clear. It was pretty clear, yeah. You did a nice job at summarizing the, the video, too. I like that you didn't read the whole transcript like many of you have. Okay, good job. Good job, Jason. Nice. Nice work. Okay. So, guys.